Hi, today we're going to be working on block number five, which the name of this block is called Best Friends. Here is it, here it is all done in the pink colorway, and now I'm going to show you how I'm going to be putting this one together in the gray and black colorways. All of the black are onyx grunge fabrics, and then these are attached and then we've also got our white paper. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just put all of my flying geese because basically that's what all of these are. So I'll start by sewing one side together, press them, then also the second side together. And I'll come back and show you as I progress through how it is that I've done it. So here we go with block number five of Moda's Stitch Pink quilt along. I am piecing this one together based on how the instructions stated, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece all of the center together first, then I'll do these. So at this point what I've done is these four flying geese. I'm going to show you how I'm going to get these trimmed up so that they are ready to go into the blocks for the next step. So these blocks are supposed to measure two and a half by four and a half inches. I will tell you, I cut my wings an eighth of an inch larger. So what I did was I actually cut them at three inches and then cut the square diagonally to get my two. The reason why I did that was because as I was going through it, I was finding that it was really tight and I was worried about losing my quarter of an inch at the top and I didn't want to do that. So I thought, okay, let's put it together in a different manner. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and just lay it on top of it. Well, this would work to trim it this way. I don't want to do that. And as you can see right here, is my 45 degree line and it's not matching up with anything and to me that's important because that's going to really help me keep it square. So if the block is supposed to measure two and a half by four and a half that means that I should be able to put my two and a quarter inch mark right here to be able to square this up. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'll move it to the gray so that you can see it a little bit better. Here is my one inch, there's my two inch, here's my two and an eighth, and right here is my two and a quarter. So you can see that little mark right there, I'm hoping. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on it so that you really can see it. I'm gonna take that mark and I'm going to put it right here on my block so that it is right nestled at that corner. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 45 degree line and line that right up because that should make me square when I get done or a rectangle. I'm going to trim this side first and then I'm going to trim across the top. I'm going to move my pieces out of the way and I'm going to rotate it. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing again, except for if you can see, this is why I did it that way. My diagonal line is going, my 45 degree is right over here, so again I don't have it. But this time I have a couple other reference points I can use instead. I have my two and a half inch mark right here that I can follow all the way across. I have my four and a half inch mark right here that I can follow all the way down. Then the third mark that I have is right here in the upper corner and that happens to be my quarter inch line. So I can very easily make certain that I am totally ready and square and I can trim my block. So now my block is definitely ready. So I'm going to place it back in here and I'm going to go ahead and square up the rest of mine. I will speed it up so that you don't get bored. All 
All right, those are all squared up, so now I can put those together and I can start working on these. I'll come back once I have these all done and we get ready to put it all together. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, I have sewn the center completely. And how I did it was you watched me square up my flying geese, which that's what these four are. Then I just added to two of them the four corner pieces and then put it all together. I want to show you a couple things that I did do on this one, though, a little bit different. When I pressed these, what I did was I pressed the top and the bottom row. We've got one, two, three rows out, and then I pressed the center in. And the reason why I did that was because on my first one, you can see what I did was I pressed all of them open. And it was fine. It's nice and flat. Let me turn it this way. So you, it's nice and flat. There really are no issues with it. But I found that the fabric on this one really wanted to fold in. So that was why I did it. There are times that your fabrics are going to want to be folded in a particular way. And when they do that, you want to follow what they want to do. So that's how I did that. I have made all my other flying geese in the exact same way that I did the first two. I'm going to get those trimmed up. One of the things that you're going to want to do is a little bit of housekeeping before you square those up. So if I turn these over, you can see I have got that extra little piece right there. I'm going to trim those on all of my blocks Oops. before I square them up. Because what that will do is that will give me a nice clean finish. And then when I'm done, I'm done. I, I'm squared up and I'm ready to put my block together. One more thing. When you go to add these rows, the top and the bottom, what you're going to want to do is add the pieces, put one on top of the other, right sides together. And you're really not going to want to stitch on this side you're going to want to stitch on this side. And the reason being is because then when you're coming to the point here, you can see exactly where you're sewing so that when you press it open, you don't lose your point. All right, just a little hint on how to do that. So I'm going to finish trimming this up, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square these up off camera because I did the first four these four on camera. I'm going to do these next ones exactly the same way. So I thought, well, we'll just keep right on going and do those off camera. So when I come back, I will have the block together and it will be done, which is really getting exciting. So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Block number five is complete. I want to go over a couple of things that I did on block five with you, especially when it comes to the flying geese. And this is a flying geese right here. The pattern indicates that you should be cutting these two and seven eighths inches. I'm going to strongly suggest that these pieces be cut at three inches. I found that when I did it at two and seven eighths, I just did not have enough fabric for my comfort to be able to square it up properly. The inside of the geese that you're going to go ahead and cut at the size that the pattern indicates. But these additional pieces, so these and these, you're going to want to cut them just a little bit bigger. Three inches is plenty to cut them at three inches square and then cut them once diagonally. You should be able to square them up just fine doing it at that size. Now, when it came to pressing, I did end up pressing most of this one open. Um, on the pink one, you'll see I did 
press this piece out and look at what happened here. I'm kind of got a fold over in here again. It's not real happy where it's at. So I probably will go back and press this seam here open. On this one, it all laid really good except for right here. I'm going to leave that one be just as it is because it seemed to come out okay in the end. I do have threads. Um, other than that, the pattern was really pretty simple to put together. But I am going to tell you, I did have to cut these pieces twice because I cut them once per the directions. And then when I went to make this one, I cut them at three and had no issues at all. I was able to square them up as you can see or as you saw in the video. So this is the very end of block number five. Tomorrow we begin working on block number six and I cannot wait to get to that one with you because that one's a really pretty one. So here we go. Here are my two block fives. And as I said, tomorrow is block six. So I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Bye-bye.